Here you can see the activities of individual neurons in a fruit fly brain. We record this video using a technique called calcium imaging. Neurons communicate with each other primarily by sending short electrical pulses, which we call spikes. Therefore, we are very interested in the spiking activities of neurons, and we can gauge these activities by using calcium ions. Very briefly, here is my neuron. Inside of the neuron, there is an excess amount of negative charges. Outside of it, there is an excess amount of positive charges. This gives rise to, a, to an electrical potential difference, which we call membrane potential. Typically, when a neuron is at rest, this membrane potential stays at around minus 70 millivolts. Once the neurons start to receive some input from the other neurons, this membrane potential increases. When more inputs arrive and cross through a certain threshold, this membrane potential sharply increases and drops down back to the resting potential. This peak we call a spike or an action potential. To initiate this spiking activity, multiple ion channels on the membrane have to open to allow these positive ions to enter the neuron. And one type of these ions is the calcium ions. Now imagine that you are measuring the calcium ion concentration inside the neuron. When the membrane potential increases, the calcium ion concentration also increases and drops down very slowly. So to look at activities, one can harness the change in the calcium ion concentration. And one way to do it is to have a molecule that can bind to calcium ion and become fluorescent. Fluorescent is a phenomenon that when a molecule absorbs light of a shorter wavelength, it emits light of a longer wavelength. So now we have a system that when a neuron is active, the calcium ion concentration inside the neuron increases and the neuron glows. Here you are seeing an example of the calcium imaging of a foot fly brain region responsible for olfaction, the smell perception. Each of the circular patches here is a cell body of a neuron. When the neuron is active, the calcium ion concentration increases and the neuron glows. The higher it is the ion concentration, the brighter it glows. Here, when an odor is presented to the fly, a large region of the brain becomes active. You can also see the activities of the individual neurons. Now, let's focus on the circled neuron. On the right side, you can see the plot of the fluorescent changes caused by this neuronal activity. Each of these fluorescent peaks is a result of multiple spikes. One could utilize some algorithms to decode the numbers of spikes that result in this fluorescent change. And you can see the example spikes below the fluorescent plot. How do you put calcium indicators into neurons? So there are a few ways. One way is to directly load this calcium indicator into the neuron using micro-injection pipette. The other way is to genetically modify these neurons so they can produce these calcium indicators on their own. Other ions enter neurons when they spike. Why use calcium ions in particular to detect the activity? So uh, neurons also detect calcium ion concentration change to regulate their own cellular function. Initially at the resting state, the calcium ion concentration inside the neuron is very low. 
and once they have spiking activity, this calcium ion concentration increases a lot, which makes it easier for the neurons to detect their own activity, and also for us. There are other ion indicators available, including chloride ion or sodium ion, but uh, currently, calcium iron indicators is still the more popular one. Uh, why not use EEG or fMRI instead of calcium imaging? So EEG and fMRI cannot provide such a high spatial resolution. The typical resolution of fMRI is around one cubic millimeter. So, so thousands of neurons can pack into this volume. But calcium imaging allows us to see the activities of individual neurons and even the compartment or parts of the neurons. So this method is more powerful in terms of spatial resolution. 